Hello, welcome back to Talking Europe, a special programme for you today. We're debating Scottish independence from the UK, an issue that's come right back to the fore since the Scottish National Party won the most seats in the Scottish Parliament in early May of this year. Now, uh, in this part of the programme, I think we're going to get into the meat of some of the more European aspects of this story. Just before the break, we heard Alan Smith, member of the British Parliament for the Scottish National Party, uh, telling us about advantages uh, for Scotland of potentially rejoining the EU as an independent nation. Uh, so I'd like to bring in Dean Lockhart, a member of the Scottish Parliament for the Conservative and Unionist Party. Uh, Dean, uh, we heard Alan say, for example, that uh, any border between Scotland and England uh, would not be that significant, would be perhaps more like Calais, where things do flow uh, relatively fluidly. Can, uh, tell, can you tell us what you make of those arguments? Well, look, it was interesting Alan uh, referred to rocket boosters in his previous answer. I mean, that, that's as precise as the SNP gets in terms of the economic case for independence. They have, haven't told us what currency they would use. You would imagine after all the, these years of campaigning for independence, they could have a credible answer on what currency Scotland would use, what the central bank would be, what the trade position would be with the rest of the UK, which is, uh, as I said, over 60% of our trade. If, if you look at the economic reality, um, our Scotland's trade with Germany is 4% of our exports. Now, I, I would like that to increase. And uh, after Brexit, trade levels have uh, stabilised. And I'm very much hoping that our future relationship with the EU will be much more stable than it has been in the past 12 months. But certainly, if you, if, if you look at just the harsh realities, there is a fiscal transfer from the rest of the UK to Scotland of £15 billion a year. Scotland spends £130 per head on public services uh, compared to an average of 100 in the rest of the UK. So, of course, Scotland could go independent, but our argument is it would make us economically weaker and it would make us less relevant on the global stage. Could we rejoin the EU? Potentially, but there are significant barriers in place to Scotland rejoining the EU. We've got the fiscal deficit, we've got the question of currency, we've got the question of central bank, and we've got the question of whether other EU member states would want that, that question of separation on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So if uh, Alan talks about Brexit being disruptive, Scottish independence would make Brexit, unfortunately, look like uh, a walk in the park. OK, Alan Smith, uh, what do you say to that? Oh, change happens. And uh, we'll put a case to the people of Scotland at the proper time once we've dealt with COVID. Uh, and we'll, exactly as Dean suggests, we'll digest all those numbers and put the case together. We'll explain what the border will look like. Now, we know the broad strokes of it, but uh, we're not in, an, in an independence campaign right now. We've just won the election massively in Scotland. We're focusing on the COVID recovery and part of the EU accession process. Obviously, that's a process that needs to be gone through. But I am absolutely confident that we'll be welcomed as a EU member state and member states will have their own interests in that and things to discuss. But the best economic mm -hmm. future and the best interest for us as a society is to accede into the European Union. And Brexit has put the UK into a really bad place. I mean, Dean talks about being less globally significant. By being a member state of the European Union, Scotland will have a far bigger platform, a far bigger team to be part of. But just on some of those very specific questions, which are, of course, very fundamental that Dean Lockhart and others have raised, uh, the question of which currency Scotland uh, would intend to use, for example, the Scottish National Party has had quite a long time now to think about these questions. Um, is the Scottish National Party preparing to put something more concrete on the table about this? Well, yes, we have. And uh, what uh, our position is, uh, is that uh, we'll continue to use sterling. We'll make payments as a solidarity payment uh, in terms of the UK national debt. And then as the economics become clearer, we'll make the decision in the fullness of time about what uh, the best situation for Scotland's going to be. So there, there are some questions to which we can say we'll know that at the proper time, which underlines my point that we're not having an independence referendum tomorrow. It is when, not if. But there's a lot of things in flux across the European continent right now, a lot of things about debt levels post-COVID and as we go through that. Every member state across the EU is dealing with these issues, same as us. So independence will be part of that discussion and we'll bring that forward at the proper time. And meantime, we have a perfectly robust holding pattern in terms of where we actually are. And the economic advantages and the societal advantages, the political advantages 
of rejoining the European Union will, I think, mm. be a real mm. energising possibility within that campaign. All right, something that's very important uh, in the EU, it's really been shown up by Brexit, the issue of borders. Uh, if an independent Scotland did rejoin the EU, what would happen on this 154 kilometre long land border uh, with England? Alan Smith and uh, Nicola Sturgeon said recently, you know, nobody in the SNP wants to see a, a border between Scotland and England. But given how strictly the EU protects its single market, there really would have to be some infrastructure. You've already admitted that. And we heard in our report earlier that people in the border areas really don't want to see this. They think it would hamper uh, many parts of their lives, to put it lightly. Well, I dispute that. And I think there's been a lot of scaremongering about what the border is going to look like. And it's not like the EU doesn't have lots of borders that uh, we can look at. Uh, there's the border between the UK and Calais. There's the border between Sweden and Norway. There's the border between uh, Denmark and Germany. There's the external wider borders. So we'll have all those details. And the, the UK is going through a masterclass in the last four years about how borders work, not least across the island of Ireland, where the Conservative government has really played fast and loose with this stuff. Now, our land border with England is really very short. There's only so many crossing places for goods, so it'll be easily managed. Uh, it won't be the first time that uh, a, a state has worked through a border, and it will not apply to people because the common travel area will continue. And services, obviously, uh, cross borders in different ways. So there's ways which will work it out, but I, 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 I've said it will be a more significant border. We acknowledge that because it will be an external border of the European Union. Sadly, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to see the UK coming back into the single market and customs union. Uh, they're, they're minded against that. But we, why should we be taken out of those advantages? Because uh, people in the UK said otherwise. Uh, Scotland was taken out of the EU against our will. That's been bad for our farmers, our fishermen, our students, our businesses. <laughs> and we want back in. Uh, Dean Lockhart, I mean, surely it's it's not in any Westminster government's interest either, is it, to uh, try and create a hard border, a difficult border between Scotland and England? Well, it's a really interesting question, Catherine, because the, the decision, um, if you listen to Alan and other members of the Scottish National Party, they make it out as if it's their decision. But the, you know, the decision would be that border between Scotland and the rest of the UK would be a decision uh, between the UK government and the EU uh, commission. It would not be for the uh, Scottish government to determine what that border looks like. And as we've seen with Northern Ireland, unfortunately, there are real practical issues where you have part of you know, the UK uh, outside of the EU single market um, with a, a land border. And that's, that's what we would see. Mm -hmm. And a reminder that 61% of Scotland's trade is with the rest of the UK. And that, I think the, the difference between what you're hearing from myself and, and Alan and other members of the SNP is we're very willing to discuss specifics, uh, really get into the detail. Alan Smith is flying at 36,000 feet. He never gets into the details of currency, of trade borders, of central banks, of what would actually happen. He talks about <laughs> independence published down the path. If, they have re if the SNP had real answers now, they would let us know what the real answers are. What? The reality is they don't have the answers. All right, well, let's just uh, hear from Nicola Sturgeon herself, who says perhaps ultimately this should just go back to the Scottish people. We're coming back a bit to the beginning of our debate topic. Let's hear from the Scottish First Minister. If we end up in court, which is not something I want to see, that would only be because we had a UK government that refused to accept Scottish democracy. And I think that would be an absurd, outrageous and completely unacceptable position for them to be in. I support independence, the UK government oppose independence, that's legitimate, but the only people who have the right to decide that question are the people of Scotland, and the way to do that is in a referendum. So, As Nicola Sturgeon alluded to there, there's a lot of talk recently about this potentially being decided by the courts um, because we have these very firm positions, uh, Boris Johnson firmly against having this referendum, Nicola Sturgeon firmly uh, intending to have one. Uh, Dean Lockhart, uh, Nicola Sturgeon said the Prime Minister is refusing to accept Scottish democracy. Well, Catherine, it's really interesting. We're talking about court battles in the middle of a COVID crisis, and that's exactly what we're talking about. We're, we're saying children right now in Scotland can't sit exams. We've got new variants to deal with. The vaccination programme Scotland is rolling out slow, uh, much slower than the rest of the UK. Those are the priorities, not court battles. And let me just make one fundamental point. There is no democratic mandate for the SNP to hold another independence referendum. In the recent Scottish Parliament election, 
and in 2019 general election, 2017 general election, the SNP and the other nationalist parties got less than 50% of the vote. And that, that, I think that's a really important point because people, some people think, oh, some people think it's a majority position. What? All the major elections in, in, in since the independence referendum, there has been support, majority support for Scotland remaining part of the UK. Uh -huh. So I think the not only uh, not a constitutional mandate, because this is outside the competence of the Scottish Parliament, of which I'm a member, mm -mm. but it's also democratically the majority view of Scottish people, mm -mm -mm. not in opinion, but in actual elections, the majority of Scot people in Scotland have voted for parties who want Scotland to remain part what? of the UK. That's okay. the reality. Let's have one last word then from Alan Smith on this. There is no question that there is a mandate democratically and legal for an independence referendum in Scotland. It's a question of when, not if. Uh, Dean's party lost the election significantly and uh, only really exist in, in our parliament by virtue of our modern pr pr proportionate system. Uh, we won 85% of the constituency seats in the Scottish Parliament. There is no question there's a mandate. It's a question of when, not if. It's not happening tomorrow. But I'm very confident that our pro-European sentiment in Scotland and the real-world advantages of rejoining the EU will very, very significantly boost our case for independence. Well, I can see uh, Dean Lockhart disagreeing with you there, but we will have to probably pick up this debate another time. Thank you both very much for taking part in our programme. Alan Smith and Dean Lockhart. Good to talk very much, Catherine. And thanks to you for watching as well. See you soon here on France 24.